This video is made possible by Pits and Spits. Welcome back to Smoky Ribs, I'm Russ Jones. And if it's your first time here, please check out my vast library of over 10 years of video productions. I do everything from barbecue to seafood boils, crawfish boils, pizza, hamburgers, hot dogs. I do product reviews like I'm doing today. There's a lot in there and I'm sure there's something that will appeal to you. Now let's get started with this review. First, let's take a look at the quality of this pit. First off, the lid is completely stainless. All your seams are seamless. They have completely welded up and finished all the wells on this for a very good, clean look. And the only weld that I can actually see on this outside of the handles is right here on this little hinge, this latch. And I can tell from that 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 is Heliarch, or nowadays it's referred to as TIG, Tungsten Inert Gas Welding, which is slag-free and very clean welding, penetrates well. I know a thing or two about welding. I was a welder in the naval shipyard for 40 years. Let's take a look at the top grate. This grate is expanded metal, and as you can see, I've got a coat of oil on this. The day I received it, I unboxed it, uncrated it, got it off its pallet, got it off the skids, and I went ahead and sprayed everything on the inside and all the grates, because this is bare metal and I went ahead and sprayed all that down and waiting for a day that it wasn't raining that I could actually burn this thing in and today is that day. This top grate measures 20 and a quarter inches by 32 inches the other way. So as you can see, that's quite a bit of cooking area here. Now they do have another grill that has a roll top that actually has two grates. I wanted the flat top and there's a reason for that. The style of cooking that this allows is really the way I started. And what I mean by that is the bottom grate, which is the fire grate. That grate actually lets up and down. You adjust the temperature by the height of the fire, not the grate. Kind of opposite of a Santa Maria. The grate stays stationary, the bottom up and down. And in its lowest position, you can do like low and slow type cooks and I'll be demonstrating that over time. There's also two access doors on this pit on the front that allows you to get into the fire grate in the event you need to add more charcoal, more wood, and oh yeah, did I mention you can burn wood in this as well. The fire grate has been doubled with expanded metal for longevity, and it's not welded into the actual frame, so therefore you could remove this and replace it if it, in the event it ever did burn out. Now this unit is their carbon steel unit. It is available in stainless as well. If you wanna to go to that route, stainless would be virtually maintenance free. This is the lever where you raise and lower the fire grate. Now, as you can see, that's metal on metal, that's painted surfaces. I know in time that I will have some paint knocking off on these little grooves here and possibly actually on the lever itself. So what I'm doing, I started from day one, I went ahead and sprayed this with some oil. And speaking of that, every time I get through cooking with this, I will be rubbing down the outside with some good mineral oil, like a cutting board oil. And I'm just doing the entire surface, but first I wanna burn in and set this paint on this before I start conditioning it. But that will make this pit last indefinitely. If you take care of it, it will last virtually a lifetime. It's good, heavy construction. The actual body of the grill is 12 gauge. That is somewhere between 1 8 of an inch and 3 30 seconds of an inch thick. It's right in the middle, 7 64 is what I think it is. On the lid, if you notice, it also has a built-in thermometer. This is a Tell True thermometer. That is the standard for barbecue grills. It's a customized pits and spits thermometer. This pit also comes with a gas starter, or I like to call it gas assist. It can hook to a propane tank. It is piped in into the very center of the bottom of this pit, and from there it has a manifold that has tiny holes drilled, orifices if you will, that the fire will actually reach out and hit the wood or hit the charcoal and get it started up. I'll be demonstrating that shortly. I do have wood cool touch handles, not only on the lid, but also on the front doors. This unit also has four eight inch casters. Two of them on one end, they swivel with locks on those as well. 
gotta love that. Now also the ventilation system on this, the front of it, you have these vents here that just screw out. You can adjust how much airflow you want by simply screwing these in or out. There's one on each one of these access doors. The exhaust vent is actually built into the lid of this pit. It's three quarters of an inch wide and it runs three foot the entire length of this pit. And also the width of this pit is two foot. It also has two handles that are welded in that has cushion grips and this pit is very, very easy to move around, especially with the eight inch casters and the pivoting wheels. I don't know what this pit weighs in at, but it is pretty doggone hefty. Pits and Spits is in Houston, Texas. These are made right there in Houston through fabrication shops there. This is not something that came from another country and stamped out. They hand make each and every one of these. Getting back to the casters there, as you can see, they are actually flanged. So in the event something did happen and you damage one of these wheels, it's just as easy as taking out four bolts and nuts to replace that wheel, no problem. There's also an ash catch in the very bottom of this and it's easy to pull out. It's just a drawer that you can take your ash after all the fires extinguished and put where you normally put ashes at. So our burn-in is underway. I expect this scene to run pretty high temps because I've got a whole layer of charcoal and that's going to jack this heat up. It's hot right now. We're gonna be back here in about two, maybe three hours. Let this have plenty of time to cook in good. Well, after two hours of burning in, I went ahead and utilized some of this charcoal. Even though this is not the official cook, I took some hatch chilies that my wife went and picked up fresh yesterday. We get them every August. They come right out of New Mexico. They deliver to our local Rouse's here. And every August we go get hatch chilies. Now I've got a grill full of them here that's just finished up. Matter of fact, I just put them in a Ziploc bag, let them sit there and steam to remove the skins. And the other half I put into a dehydrator last night. It's got about another day going to dehydrate that for just dehydrated peppers, or I might take some of them and pulverize them into a grinder and uh, make like a hatch chili powder for seasonings, rubs, or even to add into chili, that should be killer. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Check out Pits and Spits. I'll have a link in the description box if you're interested in this cooker or any other cooker they have, smoker, pellet grill, whatever the case may be. Links are in the description. I'm Russ Jones with Smoker Ribs Barbecue.